Now there is one thing about Leica cameras that separates them from every other camera company on this planet. I'm gonna give you a minute to see if you can guess what it is. Take like five seconds to drop your guess in the comments. YouTube, what is good? So today is gonna be a little bit of a shorter video. We're just gonna sit down and talk about a topic, specifically Leica cameras and the smart way to buy Leicas. This is something not a lot of people talk about. It's not something that I knew until I really started shopping for a Leica camera, and it took me a long time to find the right one. This is not a quick solution, but it is a solution that is gonna save you a lot of money. I was able to save right under $2,000 on this Leica camera, and when I got it in the mail, it was basically brand new. So we're gonna talk about that, but first I wanna thank the sponsor on today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is hooking up the first 500 people to go to the link in the description on this video with a free trial of Skillshare. You're getting two months of access to Skillshare's online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, technology, and more. Premium memberships give you unlimited access to high quality videos from experts in their field so you can improve your skill, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. So essentially you can use Skillshare to learn anything, but since we're talking about Leica cameras today, I wanna highlight a class by a Leica photographer photographer, his name is Steven Vanosco, AKA Van Styles. I may have butchered his name if I did, I'm sorry, but like I just mentioned, he is a Leica photographer out of Los Angeles. He focuses a lot on black and white photography, minimal photography, photography that doesn't have a lot of editing, and one of his big things is really using photography to tell a story and relying on the photo itself. So if you wanna check out his class, go to the link in the description on this video. The first 500 people get two months of Skillshare for free. They're hooking y'all up. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring the video today. Now. Let's talk about Leica cameras. Now there is one thing about Leica cameras that separates them from every other camera company on this planet. I'm gonna give you a minute to see if you can guess what it is. Take like five seconds to drop your guess in the comments. Leica cameras are not just cameras. Nikon, they make cameras. Canon, they make cameras. Sony, they make cameras. Leica, on the other hand, they make cameras that are also luxury goods. First and foremost, this is technically a used Leica, but it's not really used. When I got this in the mail, when I opened it up, when I looked at it, there was not a single scratch. The shutter count was extremely, extremely low, under 100. The leather strap was still wrapped up. It was still sealed. It looked like it had never been unrolled. One of the batteries was still wrapped. Essentially, this was a new used camera. And that's something very important to understand about Leica. Leica, more than any other camera brand on this planet Earth, the depreciation and value when it is opened is huge. Immediately, it's like a thousand dollars lost on the camera. It's just like driving a new car off the lot. When you go buy a brand new car, you drive it off the lot, boom, the value plummets. The same exact thing applies to Leica cameras. So like I said, there's all these camera brands out there and then there's Leica. It's just like watches. Y'all have seen me wear my Zen U1. Right now I'm wearing an Apple watch, but my Zen U1, it's a pretty nice dive watch. It's German made, it's 1000 meter tested, it's submarine steel, you can take it in the ocean, it doesn't corrode, it's sapphire, it's great automatic movement. On paper, this watch is technically better than a Rolex Submariner, but why is a Rolex so much more expensive? There's a brand name behind it, there's marketing behind it, there's a mystique around the brand. If you are wearing a Rolex, you're that guy wearing a Rolex, just like if you're using a Leica camera, you're that guy using a Leica camera. It's a status symbol, there's something to it. But here's what happens. Because of this status symbol, you have two types of people buying Leica cameras. You have photographers, and then you have people who just like nice stuff. So the fact that two types of people are buying Leica cameras is actually a great thing for photographers because it creates a used market that has cameras in it that aren't necessarily used in a way that a photographer would use them. Let's say you buy a used camera from me. That camera is used. Trust me, it has had the crap beaten out of it, I've used it a lot, and I'm gonna reflect that in the price. You're gonna get a good deal, but you're also not getting an essentially new camera. In the case of Leicas, you can find quite a few used Leicas that are essentially brand new because the person using them isn't necessarily a photographer. They're a person who just likes nice things. They want the status of the Leica, so they purchased it, and then they realized, eh, this isn't something that I necessarily want. I'd rather have the money for something else. I'll sell it, I'll take the loss. I did get some enjoyment out of it, and I'm gonna move on. And that is the person that you wanna look for when you are buying a Leica camera. 
Only problem, it does take some patience. I first really started thinking about buying a Leica last July, and then I got super serious this winter in December, and I took a ton of time to research. I actually almost bought a Q a few months back. It wasn't the right price, and I kept waiting, and I found this one. So patience is one of the biggest ingredients in this whole thing. If you don't wanna have patience, I'm sorry, you're probably not gonna get a great deal. But if you do, trust me, they are out there. So let me speculate really quick on how I got this Q at such a good price. What I'm thinking happened, Leica announced the Leica QP, and then a few months after, they announced the Leica Q2, which is a beefed up, much better version of the Q. It's waterproof, resolution's better, 4K, it's just a better camera. Well, the Q2 was priced at the same price as the QP was originally. So now two things are happening. This QP was opened, so the value goes down immediately just like when you buy a car and drive it off the lot. But because of the announcement of the Q2, the value goes down even further because Leica dropped the retail price from 5,000 to 4,200. That's where it was on every single website. So Leica doing this is actually very bad for the original owner of this camera because not only are they getting that drop in price from the box being opened, they're getting another drop in price from the announcement of the Q2. This is something you wanna look out for if you are buying your own Leica. You wanna to try to straddle these releases. I'm gonna create some just fake hypothetical cameras, for example. Let's say Leica has the M11 model, and then they announce the M12 model. Well, let's say someone bought that M11 two months before the M12. They might dump that M11 at a low price to get their money out of it so they can get the M12 when it releases later on. I'm thinking that's what may have happened with my camera. Someone purchased it, they realized, oh man, I'm losing money on this thing, this other camera came out that I want more, I'm gonna go ahead and sell it. Or, because this is a luxury item, someone bought it because they thought it looked cool, they were like, man, that matte black is sick, this is honestly one of the coolest looking cameras I've ever seen in my life, it's amazing, but they bought it for all the reasons outside of the actual photos, and then they realized, eh, I don't really need it, I'd rather get the money out of this and put it towards another hobby, something else, and they sold it at a discounted price to me. Whole point of this video is I want you to understand that Leica cameras are not like normal cameras. There's a lot of them floating out there that people purchase for reasons outside of actual photography and then they decide to get rid of and they don't really care about the price the same way someone like me or you would. I think as people who are really into photos, you're really into making the best images possible, it's extremely difficult to justify the price of a new Leica because of all the other stuff that comes with it that drives the price up. But the main takeaway point of today's video and the reason I'm making this is to tell y'all it's not impossible to own a Leica camera. You just gotta be strategic and you gotta take advantage of this used market that is created by the fact that this is a luxury good as well as a camera. So if you're someone out there, you're looking for a Leica, you're trying to figure out how you can get one for less than the retail price, this is how you're gonna do it. Trust me, in the process of me finally getting my own Leica, I looked at a lot of used ones and I saw so many used Leicas that weren't really used at all. You know, because they're so expensive, a lot of people are actually scared to even use them and become kind of like a safe camera that doesn't really leave any scenarios that aren't necessarily safe. If you wanna see more of this camera, you wanna see me use it, you wanna see the photos that it makes, make sure you hit that thumbs up button on this video and hit that subscribe button for more photography videos using the Leica QP as well as all the other things that I shoot with. Thank you guys as always for watching. Y'all are the truth and I hope this video is able to help some of you out there understand how the uh, Leica world works because it is a complicated one. See y'all next time.